Hello YouTube, uh, this is Eugene from Lugerman and today we continue in our series about troubleshooting pistols and today's uh, feature is troubleshooting and reassembly and disassembly of a Luger pistol. Uh, first, quick review of history of development and variations of the pistols. The, there are still major differences in the production of the gun. Very early pistols were uh, started production in 1900 and uh, those pistols were very early and their distinctive feature is a dish toggle which is different from a standard model uh, pistols and the dish toggle pistol usually you would see a dish toggle with a pencil barrel and this style of toggles the major variation is actually inside of the pistol where you have the grip safety which was illuminated by german army for the, their adoption and the mainspring in the, in the pistol would, instead of the coil, would be a flat. These guns are very highly collectible, uh, hard to find weapons, but for shooting, they're not the best. You probably want a more uh, standard, later model POE for if you wanted to make a shooter. Uh, on this side, we have uh, standard uh, models that were designed, uh, this is second step in the design of the pistol, where the flat spring was replaced with the coil spring in the grip. There was a small change in the extractor design and the bridge block, and we'll go over them uh, separately in a different video. But today, our featured item will be a standard Army Issue 4-inch uh, P08, and uh, to defer it from a second model, of a Navy, uh, it's P06, some people call them, they're known as a Navy model. There are several different styles. The distinctive feature of the Navy is a two position rear sight of a hundred and two hundred uh, yards. These guns were designed and developed for Navy, uh, German, not German Navy, and uh, issued during World War I. There were three distinctive runs We'll go over them separately. And mechanically, this uh, arm issue and navy issue are very similar, except the rear sight itself. The third variation of similar model is a LP08, long pistol model 08. It's the same, again, as a standard arm issue pistol. In the, in the difference is 8-inch barrel and an adjustable rear sight that is graded for 8, sometimes 900 yards. Uh, these were these pistols were designed to be issued to artillery and machine gun crews to replace any additional weapons that they might need uh, because they had enough to carry for their machine gun support and uh, cannon gun ca cannon crew. They had barrels, they had ammunition, they had storage, they had all kinds of equipment that they needed, and to give them something for close quarter combat was an additional range the 8-inch gun was designed. It is different, um, you know, balance-wise from an army issue pistol. They are very accurate. 800 yards is obviously a little optimistic, but me personally, I shoot the gun at 100 yards very successfully. You could shoot it offhand and hit a 12-inch plate without any problems. Uh, less commonly known uh, model would be an artillery commercial with a 12 and 3 quarter inch barrel, very similar in design, adjustable rear si front side, uh, final adjustment on the rear side. These were commercially imported in 1920 and for all intensive purposes, are not any different than any other model. So we are, this is the review of the PO8s that are similar in design and have coil spring in them. This is uh, grip safety models, you have a 1906 grip safety model with a 9mm 4 inch barrel. You have a, an experimental 1900 with dish toggles with a, a 6 inch 9mm barrel as well. You have a standard, what they call a pencil barrel, a 30 caliber pistol with a 4 and 3 quarter inch barrel with also with grip safety. This is a Brazilian contract. Of course, you have our own 1907 45 caliber pistol which is also uh, has a grip safety and design of a coil later style spring and very desirable, hard to find 1902 
this toggle carabine, which still has a flat spring, earlier design, grip safety. They came with the stocks, never really is issued to any services. These were uh, items of luxury, uh, if often gifted to generals, presidents, or high ranking officers as a, uh, a uh, tone of recognition of the sort. Uh, so we're going to put this all aside and attempt to reassemble or dis re disassemble and uh, then reassemble the P08. So this is the gun we're going to be looking at. Interestingly enough, P08 model only has one set of screws. Everything else on the weapon does not need any, almost no additional tools necessary to disassemble the weapon. Obviously we want the magazine out. We want to make sure the chamber is empty, safety off, chamber empty. I'm hoping that's a given you guys that I don't have to reiterate the fact that the weapon has to be empty for on reassembly and disassembly. Interestingly enough, there was an option uh, during the 1920s when these guns were issued to the German police. There was an attempt to prevent accidental discharge if the weapon needed to be reassembled and disassembled uh, in the field with the chamber in it. Uh, those guns will have a sear safety and uh, maybe one day we will have a separate video on a police issue weapon. So the screwdrivers for the screws are very, has a very shallow, very narrow cut. So you sometimes you, what you want to do is grind the screwdriver that fits that perfectly. A lot of times a loading tool we could be assisted in disassembly. Uh, magazine out, grips out, screws out. At this point, we don't really need anything to take the gun apart. Anyways, for the field strip. You, this is your takedown lever. It comes down 90 degrees, but you have to remember this lever also stops slide from moving forward. Therefore, in order to disassemble the gun, <clears throat> you need to be able to push on it. You see how it comes up uh, about a quarter inch? At that point, the lever will turn. If you have the gun in full battery, the lever is supported by the spring and the slide, and therefore will not be will not be turning. You turn that down. Ideally, your side, side plate will just lift and come out of the way. You have a lever here that transfers your trigger pull to a sear bar. And if you're not familiar with Luger design, your trigger moves and reacts with the lever. The lever pushes down on the sear so if the, if the gun is cocked, there is a potential to, like we just did, to fire the weapon just by pushing the sear when the side plate is out of place. So once we got the side plate out, we will slide the upper off. You will see the back safety and the pin came out, which they're not supposed to. But this is an effort. Tolerance is a loose. Anything is a possibility. So we have a slide assembly with that hook. That hook engages with a L-shaped lever inside the frame, which sometimes is hard to see. And that holds the spring. So if you wanted to see how the gun operates, we will have to put the upper back. What we're going to do is have it, see everything's falling out because this gun is so loose. <clears throat> we want the upper to be upside down slide the frame on it and about quarter way through you want to drop the hook you want it to drop the hook in front of the l shape so you want to make sure that they engage and you can see it better from the side where this engagement actually now is latched on lever we're going to push this down, and if you assemble everything correctly, you will have a spring load tension on the upper. You want to push it back, lock, and now you can see the interaction of the levers by, let me see if I can do this, 
crown of the camera. So you can see the L-shaped lever moving, spring compressing, and that's the main operation of the toggle. <clears throat> so we'll start with the upper. Of course, if the gun was cocked, you could fire the weapon just by having the upper in your hand and pushing on the sear. You want to relieve that tension, so if you pull off the upper and you, you push it just in case, because you want the spring to be relieved, because otherwise the pin won't come out easily. But if everything is correct, you have a pin that has one side is larger than the other. There's a recess on the slide. So if you assemble it from an incorrect position, the pin will be sticking and you don't want that to happen because the gun won't reassemble. So you have to assemble and reassemble from the left side. Then you, you're just pulling the toggle assembly off. You have an ejector, spring loaded, ideally, sear bar that moves up and down. This is the flat spring that holds the sear bar and you have a little plunger that also is supposed to move. We'll go over the parts. If the parts don't interact correctly, your gun will not fire or fire too fast. Sometimes that happens too. So you want to take this gun has been fired and hasn't been cleaned. So the, the, the other time you need the screwdriver is you want to remove the firing pin from a bridge block. Basically you engage with a screwdriver push it in a little bit and turn it counterclockwise. If everything is correct, it will jump out. You're gonna give it a little bit of tension and have it come out. As you can see, this particular part has protrusion that holds that part and holds the assembly in place. bridge block has a cutout on the inside to hold that protrusion in. So when this works, as you insert it in, turn it clockwise 90 degrees, and it will snap back up a little bit with the tension of the spring and hold your bridge block assembly, firing pin and the retainer and spring inside the bridge block. What you always wanted to inspect is integrity of this particular notch because it does wear. It is very important to check the firing pin as well and check the integrity of the back of this portion of the bridge block. That's the first time we do. You will see, sometimes you will see bulges, sometimes you'll see chips out of it. And that's the indication that you have an issue with the firing pin. So now this is a early World War I style firing pin. Later in mid twenties, uh, firing pins have a different design. They have three cutouts for gas escape. Because of the strong spring, because this spring participates in recoil by, uh, you know, with the toggle moving the spring and the firing pin, you have a potential in this pistol particularly, you have a potential of puncturing the primer with a firing pin. When the firing pin is punctured, uh, firing pin will puncture the primer and gases from the shot will escape through the hole inside the bridge block therefore propelling this as basically acts like a car piston it will get gases up it will come down hit the spring very hard hit retainer very hard it's only one place where it engages so you, it starts battering the retainer down eventually bridge block bulges and chips away and this spot actually wears down. If you see any kind of degradation, your best bet, and what that's what we always recommend to our shooters, is we replace these early firing pins with the firing pins that have flutes on them, which we call a World War II style firing pin for simplicity of identification, because you mostly see them in Mauser made pistols. Um, this is the first time, first thing we check on the bridge block, and that's the most important because if this eventually wears down to the point where the retainer comes out while the gun is assembled, it becomes hard to disassemble, the gun becomes inoperable, 
you want to avoid that damage at any cost possible because replacing the bridge block as you well know all the parts on this all the guns are numbered because they're hand assembled hand fitted and everything numbered on them in this case you also see damage on the bridge block like so very common on efforts not common not less common on other models but what you will see is the extractor most likely was slightly un oversized so the years of the extractor oversized it when it uh, locks on the case it lifts it up too high and results in this damage this happens and unfortunately you have to either replace the bridge block or weld the ears, reshape the extractor. We do offer this all, you know, all services necessary to bring your Luger back to operation. We do have bridge blocks in stock because that's the most common wearable item on the weapon. A lot of times we see cracks on the rear toggle. The rear toggle is under stress during fire. The design of the pistol is made so that it acts as a piston assembly of a car. Basically, when the shot happens, the assembly is locked because it's in the dead center position across all the pins and all the components. And the only way this assembly opens up and releases the case is when it gets uh, the toggle gets uh, you know f frame and toggle it correct, and the toggle starts to lift and therefore releasing the case and allowing the gun to recharge the second round. <clears throat> so the toggle is under a lot of stress. The pins inside the toggle is on, are under a lot of stress. Oftentimes we see the middle pin. Uh, it has a small, tiny retention pin right here. Under recoil, a lot of times these small pins get lost. And people don't know how to disassemble this particular weapon. They start pushing the main pin, middle pin out, and they therefore strip the retaining pin out of the gun and making the gun unsafe because what will happen if the retainer is not there, the pin starts to move. And eventually what will happen, it will actually sit on the frame, on the upper like so, not allowing the toggle to close because pin will be interacting with the slide where it shouldn't. So that's that's a common issue that happens. Sometimes the middle uh, front bridge bridge pin breaks in half. You won't know until you disassemble the pistol. So a lot of times they're pressed in and hard to disassemble. You see, it's freely moving. Usually they would be retained by the two years of the of the middle toggle, but the it will move freely inside the bridge block the same goes for the main pin main rear pin uh, has uh, the head on it the mushroom head on it a lot of times this head gets chewed up and eventually if it gets chewed up your pin starts moving uh, in the upper assembly you don't want that to move because it will also has a potential of coming out when, when it's in place and the slide is in the rear position in the frame, we can illustrate. You see how a little bit is uh, retaining. See, see this, this particular design, this particular gun actually has such a loose tolerance that it allows the pin to come out. That's what you don't really want. Because that's what will happen during battery. Your gun will jam up, will be hard to return, most likely will damage the pin. So you inspect your pins. Make sure they are solid. We do have replacements. We make them. They're modern steels, very hard, very good pins, uh, made on CNCs. Uh, we haven't had any issues with our our manufactured pins. The next uh, problem we have on this gun is an injector. It's a spring-loaded part. It has a portion that interacts with the case. When the case comes out, that kicks the case out out of the action if you see slow motions on the pistol cases mostly come up up here's the interesting part the uh, well when the gun was designed it, the way this bridge block operates and internal components of it so the bridge block is mostly hollow ejector needs to interact with the case but it doesn't have enough room to just float inside the bridge block or on the outside of it so as you can see the ejector is pushed in you press 
the ridge block bridge block goes in a full battery and now your ejector is sitting on top of the bridge block therefore kind of deterring it a little bit it's standard it's going to happen on all lugers we are actually in the process of redesigning the 45 where it shouldn't be the problem no more but you will see where on the bridge block right here you can see guys i don't know if you can see it well or not but there is a white spot where the ejector rides on the top of the bridge block sometimes it's on this shelf sometimes it's on the inside of the bridge block and a lot of times you can actually see the wear on the ejector itself i don't know if you can see it but a lot of times it's on the ejector itself right here or on the inside you want to watch out for that wear if you have an excessive polishing that you can see a white spot that means your ejector is slightly out of alignment with the bridge block your gun could potentially not function correctly because of that particular engagement not being completely in alignment ejectors do come out easily out of assembly you have to support them from your with your left hand you kind of have this disassembly now you just pry them up and they come out as you can see this this engagement is on the angle so when you insert them the same way is you want to put them in and kind of support them with the left hand and kind of press them right in a lot of times they need a small tap from this hand you tap them in and they snap in place the uh, sear bar also comes off relatively easy i need a better smaller screwdriver but the idea is that you lift the, uh, the leaf spring lift it out and push it forward and the sear bar will eventually come out what you want to watch for in the upper in the sear bar is this plunger plunger is under there's a coil spring inside of it it's very very tiny very very small but you need that to have it be free floating if it isn't you have an issue and we'll discuss that issue a little later extractors also do break uh, there is a bottom ear on the inside of the extractor that bottom ear does, does break you can disassemble this extractor by pushing the small pin out once you push you have to hold it when you do so because there's a coil spring right underneath here you push the pin out the extractor comes out with the spring you want to check it because the back ear of it could be broken and your extractor will not function correctly also check for cracks they do crack because they you know, especially in the beginning of production early dwm Erford guns they had hardened the parts very much more than it needs to be hardened i've we've seen uh, middle toggles break off here where the this interacts with the firing pin we've seen toggles break away right here because this is this looks big and beefy but the reality of it is, is there's a lot of hollow cutouts in the gun and we've seen them break off right here on either one side i even seen the uh, toggle being split in half once uh, usually you don't see a lot of issues with the s-link itself check these two ears they need to be here if one ear is broken which we've seen uh, you need to replace the s-link but besides that it's pretty much all uh, that the issues that you can have with the upper of course we do manufacture barrels barrels are wear item on this pistols especially older guns when fired with older ammunition with bad powders let's put this together uh bad powders present you you know you fire the gun with old ammo you then don't clean it for a couple of days go fire it again but barrel rusts a little bit and then eventually wears as well we do manufacture four inch barrels six inch barrels even artillery barrels we don't run the batches often uh, but we usually have barrels in stock trying to align the retainer pin correctly it's hard to do on camera without additional tools there we go. there we go. so you need to push and turn 90 degrees and the retainer will jump back just a little bit just enough uh, so that when it's in the proper position without pushing it you won't be able to turn it so the idea is that it stays in place and it can only be turned if you push it back 
So now the firing pin is in place, you see a protrusion. We don't want this to be very far out because it does then puncture primers. You want it to be a nice, you know, maybe maybe one sixteenth of the inch uh, protrusion. We're gonna put it back together. It wants to be on tension when you put it back. See how it starts to spring back? It's because the firing pin notch right here interacts with the inside of the sear notch right in the middle of the slide. So what you want to do and simplify your reassembly, you push on the sear and let the bridge block go past it. Otherwise, you're basically cocking the hammer. So right now it's cocked, I push and the gun fires. So you want to avoid that on the reassembly you just push the sear forward the bridge block, put the pin in, and now your upper is operational. You can always check it. If you have a good engagement and the sear floats freely, you will cock and, and put back in battery and the gun will fire if you release the sear. You want that to happen. You want to make sure that engagement is good. The sear, you want the sear to be moved a decent amount before it starts engaging, <clears throat> disengaging rather, <clears throat> like so. If it's releases too soon you might have a light striker uh light of uh, trigger pole and sometimes the gun will go in full battery even then what we want to do on reassembly of course the safety came out on its own but the idea is you when the safety is in place your safety lever is in place you want it to be in the middle position between the two notches in order to take or remove the pin First, now it won't go in without tooling. There it is. It went in. You shouldn't really. It should be flush, because eventually it will be held by a grip. And if safety engages correctly, <clears throat> you'll have that safety bar come up. What I usually do is when you have the side plate. Of course, we mentioned the lever that interacts between the trigger and the sear. And we want to put it on the frame, we want to lock the latch, you want to check the engagement of the side plate. You don't want it to wobble too much because it does transfer your trigger pull. If it wobbles on the frame, then your trigger pull will be sloppy. You don't want that. So it's trying to come out again. Um, so what we want to see is when you pull the trigger, you see how the trigger lever on this trigger uh, side plate is moving. You want it to move nice and even. You can see me starting to move the trigger and the lever starts moving right away. If you pull the trigger, nothing's happening for a while and then it's starting to move, you won't have a good trigger pull. This lever is, of course, adjusted and installed for this particular pistol. We do manufacture level the levers. We do have them. When we manufacture them, they're slightly oversized on both ends. We do fit into the gun to go have an ability to adjust your trigger pull. We do work on Lugers, obviously. We do have an ability to improve your trigger pull. Uh, the original levers and our levers are com come hardened. So if you wanted to adjust it, you can do so by adjusting the lever up or down. You take it out of the side plate. There is a spring-loaded pin. You put your screwdriver in, you hammer the pin out rotate it out and it comes out then you can take the lever out and try to adjust it problem is it is hard you cannot adjust it while it's in its normal state it will break right away you have to anneal it reshape it test it on the gun and then harden it back we offer that service we have very, very easy service when you have the equipment unfortunately doing that at home is next to impossible so again we wanted to make sure this cut out in the frame is aligned good with the side plate. You wanna make sure when everything's assembled, your side plate, when you, 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 what you wanna do is you put your finger on the outside of the plate and you start pulling the trigger. You don't want the side plate to move. So you have to feel it and see if the side plate moves a little bit. That's not, not a good sign. You might wanna have the side plate adjusted. We do manufacture side plates as well. We have them slightly oversized as well. We do fit into the guns. If you buy our parts, our fitting services are free if the parts are ours. 
We do manufacture levers as well, you know, side plate and the side plate levers. We, during the uh, course of our the, you know, life of the business of 25 years, we have manufactured all parts of the Lugers prior to manufacturing the 45. So we have extensive knowledge of how the Luger works, which parts are you know, more prone to issues and which parts need to be adjusted, oversized or undersized. We do have a slew of parts available, we always keep them in stock. So when you have an issue with your gun, call us, we will discuss. A lot of times, unfortunately, replacing the part simply doesn't work 100%. You need to have a, a variety of parts. They are uh, tolerant, very, it's a broad spectrum of tolerance. There's, you have Erfurt, you have DWM, you have Mauser. The gun's been produced for over 40 some years. Um, parts vary. Uh, we do have parts on the either spectrum of tolerance. If we don't, we manufacture parts that you guys might need. So uh, again, we, what you want to do uh, in the lower, in the frame, you have a couple of issue, potential issues. Of course, the springs uh, would need, uh, we, we change springs. The springs we buy are Wolf. Uh, you, you can get them, you say you can get them yourself. They're not very expensive. Problem is the firing pin spring, as we saw, is very easy to replace. You, you take the pin out, you replace it, no big issue. This spring, main spring, is very important for proper operation of the weapon, uh, but it is not very easy to remove. It requires a pin. You have to push the lever, the uh, pin, the spring reten retention uh, out. You have to hold the lever in. It is a 40 pound spring. They're, they're gonna fly. They're gonna fly in your face. When I started working on Lugers and we worked from the house, we, it took two people to remove the spring in about half an hour. Of course, with proper tooling, with an ability you know, in the shop uh, to do everything correctly, it takes a couple of seconds. So if you need to change the springs, guys, by all means, send us a gun. The service of simply remote change in that spring and with the springs included is 40 bucks. It's like doing oil change in the car. You want to do it uh, before you start firing your gun. Uh, the other common issue with these guns is a hold open. It is a very, I'm going to, the safety is bugging me. So I'm going to take it out so it's not in a way, you're not falling out. This, when this happens, the, with the safety, it's not normal. This pin needs to be replaced, which is we're going to do right after this video ends. So you have your hold open, and hold open interacts with the magazine. You have the magazine button uh, that facilitates loading of the rounds. When it's in place, you have your hold open. You have that button in pushing on the hold open when the magazine is empty, and you can see hold open spring and back. Nice. It doesn't spring far, but it springs up and down. You want to inspect this edge of the hold open because they do wear and if this edge is worn and engagement of it is on the bridge block this edge on the back edge of the bridge block if they're worn they could be reshaped they could be rehardened they could be fixed we do also manufacture hold opens because they are wear item right and, and we can replace your hold open easily if you issue, have an issue and a lot of these lugers have issues with hold open not engaging when it fires it could have to do with your hold open spring. And the test for that is you take a upper assembly, take the bridge block out because you don't want this. You don't want it for this particular test. Put the assembly up. Now you have access to the hold open. You can see it from here. What you want to do is take your magazine, put the magazine in the gun, and you can see the hold open is being sprung up. So you want to test it with a screwdriver make sure it goes up and down. The reason for the upper to, uh, uh, to be included on this test is because the spring, the leaf spring that holds the hold open and uh, helps it to operate up and down, sometimes the leaf spring deforms if it bulges out and it's bulged out too much and it starts, uh, when you put the slide on, it starts interacting with the slide, it starts pushing on the hold open like, like so. So you can, if you push too far and bolts too far out, it will start changing the operation of the hold open. It won't work all that well. Uh, hold open is a simple part, but the left leaf spring is very delicate. And a lot of times when you remove them, they break. So we strongly recommend 
you guys send us the gun to get it in installed because I've seen springs break all the time. There's a couple of manufacturers on the market uh, that ma make springs. A lot of them are brittle and we had very limited success with using aftermarket uh, springs. What we usually do is we buy manufactured springs and we retemper them uh, to our specifications and that allows for a longer life of the spring. Uh, of course, the other common issue on the lower is you have your takedown lever and the takedown lever is held in place by a small wire spring. It, you can see one end of it on the bottom and another end of it on the side. It is an L-shaped spring that sits inside of the frame and has a little uh, arc on it and that arc interacts with the takedown lever notches. There's two notches, one for the up and one for the down position. This notch is where, as you can see, there's a little scratch on the middle of it. If your uh, takedown lever spring retention is in good shape, it's arced out, it will be hard to insert the lever when it's, when it, so right now, you can see this is easily inserted, no issue. When you come to this point where you need to sit it on the other end, it, you need to push the spring down a little, insert it, if your spring is good, lever is good, you shake it, it won't come out in this position. And when it's in this position, it will be retained in place strongly. If it's not, what will happen, and it does happen a lot, have your side plate, you have your uh, upper, as you can see, you have this spot on the upper. When the lever is in upwards position, this is your stop for the slide not going forward. So it's which I'm going to simulate. Yeah. You have it going up and down very easily. You lock it. As you can see, I had to push this slide back. If I'm in this position, you can't turn it because the, uh, the stop is in the way. You push it back, lock. So now it's in place. What happens if the spring is loose? You start firing, you fire a shot. It bangs against it. It pushes it down. And then the very next shot, this flies with the bullet. So now you have a flying gun, which is really cool, but not very cool if you have grass, gravel, you drop your $3,000 weapon in pieces, and now you're crawling in the grass or mat trying to find parts. We do manufacture this little tiny L-spring, L-shaped spring. It is relatively easy to replace, but if, if you don't know what you're doing, they break very easily, bend very easily, and stop working. Uh, they're not cheap because it takes a little bit to manufacture uh, in, for proper, in proper dimension with proper tensions. But we do make them, with, that's part of the service. If you send in the gun to us for general service, those are the areas that we would inspect and replace as necessary. And the last but not least, you wanna again make sure this plunger is working and I'm gonna show you why guys. So assembly, upper assembly is together. Your bridge block engages, frame pin engages with the sear, all life is good, pin is in place. For this particular exercise, I'm gonna have this stubborn safety back in. And to avoid the safety popping out, I'm gonna put the grip back on. We don't really need to see inside of the gun at this point. Okay, so now we're going to talk about safety, engagement with the sear, and the trigger, potential trigger issues. Here's what we're going to do. Again, upper, upside down, frame on the rails, about three quarters of an inch we're going to flip it, and what you're going to do, again, is going to try to hook these two components together, make sure it goes in correctly, slide. If you've done it right, you have tension, spring tension, life is good. You're going to put, take the side plate. It has a notch on the back. Frame has a corresponding notch for it. Kind of lay it in. It won't sometimes delay in, sometimes what you want to do you have the side plate here, push back, push on the side plate, lock the lever. Now your gun is together. Here's what you want to test for. 
So now, if everything's correctly, you wanna cut the gun, release it. Your sear engagement is good, solid. You pull on the trigger, you hear a click. So what you wanna, uh, sometimes with these weapons, you fire shot, it will cycle, load the round, you pull the second trigger, second shot doesn't happen. Why? It's the test word is very simple. Cut the gun, pull the trigger and hold the trigger while you, well, when it's pulled. Pulled trigger, you see, you know, it's, I'm pulling, I'm holding, I'm gonna simulate fire. I'm gonna cut the gun, supposedly empty right now, but the cartridge will escape. Second cartridge loaded, you're still holding the trigger. Now you wanna release it slowly and hear a click. You listening, you listening. That click is very important. What happens is when you push the lever, it goes down, pushes on your sear. Put this back where it's supposed to be. So it will push on this pin, like downwards, and fire the weapon. Just, just what, what just happened. When this, when the upper cycles, the pin and the sear come back. You're holding the trigger instinctively. Therefore, your lever is in upwards position, and it's laying right here pushing your plunger inside. That's why I was talking about the plunger being springy and free to float. So now your hook is on this position when the trigger is pulled. So now you're releasing the trigger and your hook comes out of position releasing the plunger. If this engagement of, the, of this portion of the lever and the plunger are incorrect, out of alignment, lever is not uh, uh, properly adjusted. That's release will not happen. What will happen is the, the plunger will still sit on the side of the lever. It might sit like this, just, just you know, just sitting on it and it won't, won't allow the plunger to move. The, you know, it, everything's gonna be solely frozen. You won't be able to fire the gun again. The only way to reset it, if let's say this doesn't happen, you, you, do, you did the test, it doesn't happen, you can't release the trigger. So you you fire, you hold, cycle, you release, nothing happened, nothing happened. You can't, you're releasing the trigger, you're pulling again, nothing's going on. The next, next test is you wanted to release the trigger, cycle, and now your trigger, trigger pull is magically back. That is an indication of a problem. You have, might have a plunger issue, you might have a sear bar issue, you might have the side plate lever issue. Your leaf spring may be weak. A lot of times, guys calls, uh, call us and say, oh, I have a problem, is the trigger, uh, can you fix it? Can you sell me a part to fix the issue? I always say that yes, but the parts I wanna sell you are firing pin, sear, sear spring, leaf spring for the sear, L-shaped lever, and possibly the uh, side plate. So there's five, six parts that interact and make the trigger proper uh, function. Uh, you don't wanna buy five parts because most likely you need one, maybe two. Uh, it's a lot easier to send it to us. We perform trigger troubleshooting, it's only a hundred bucks and additional parts as necessary will be sold and offered to you with an explanation of what actually happened to the weapon and why, and why it doesn't function correctly. It's a common issue with the guns, easily fixed. A lot of people say, oh, the Lugers have terrible triggers, nothing can be done about it. It's absolutely not true. You just have to know what you're doing with it. Uh, I can get your trigger pulled down to two and a half, three pounds if you, you so desire. Sometimes maybe not safe to be that low, but four, five pounds is, is easily uh, achieved on this weapon. In fact, I'm gonna take the measuring tool an attempt to measure this particular trigger because it feels pretty standard on the weapon. Nothing really about it. And we have a solid six pound on it. It's a military gun. And uh, let's try to repeat it, double check. And it sits at six pounds. And that's standard military trigger, no adjustments were made to it. So now there is a final
safety check that I want you to guys perform. When you discover that your trigger is working properly, you have a trigger pull and you're gonna see the trigger pull when you cut and you pull in the trigger, you will see this portion of the sear move. And you want, it, you want it to see like it's moving up and down, the leaf spring is holding it in place. You want it to see a break somewhere in the middle of the movement, maybe closer to the back. And here's why. So the test that you want to do is you cut the pistol, fire the gun, fires fine, no problem. Cut it again, safety on. So now what happens, the safety, the way the safety works is it will have a safety bar up and the sear will not be able to travel far enough to release the firing pin. So you want to go and see, it does allow you to push it a little bit and that's okay. As long as your sear bar is in, is in place, is of a proper dimension, and doesn't wobble on the frame too much, doesn't matter how hard you try to squeeze, you won't be able to release the sear past the release of the firing pin. What you do want to make sure of when your safety is on, when you push on, this, push on the trigger, your sear goes up. As trigger releases, you want the sear to go back down. You see how it pushes and then releases? You want to make sure of that. Because if you pull on the trigger and it stays there, or it's or you can then take the screwdriver and push it gently in, it will go in and start clicking, or you get a double stage. That means you have a sear to fire and pin engagement problem. A lot of times it could be both parts that need to be either replaced or reshaped. By all means, call us, let us know. It is a dangerous situation. Your gun, if the sear doesn't go back down the way it's supposed to, your trigger pull, what will happen is you sometimes start playing with the trigger and all of a sudden the gun can go off even though it will not go off with the first pull. You pull it once, you pull it the second time and it will eventually go off. It's unsafe, call us or another gunsmith who knows Lugers, this could be remedied with a proper engagement, proper angles on the sear and the firing pin. The other thing that you wanted to check for, what I've seen happen uh, a couple of times, is uh, when on these guns, if you have a gun that you just picked up, you don't know where it's been, you don't know how long it's been sitting, and you start pushing this plunger in, and the plunger sticks, and it, you know, release it, it doesn't go all the way out, or it's slow to go out, or it's just frozen solid, which I've seen before. What will happen is when the gun is in full assembly, you fire the weapon. As we said, this upper you know, reciprocates, so this here comes in and out. What will happen if this pin is solid frozen, it will push on the lever, push your finger out, and fire the gun again. So you don't want that. You know, when you're pushing on the trigger, you fire, it cycles and all of a sudden goes bent again. Lugers are very, very fast. They originally, the toggle was designed for machine gun, Maxim machine gun, Vickers. Some people call them Vickers, some call them Maxim. Uh, it's a design that was used a lot in World War I, water cool design, uh, but the toggle assembly and uh, bridge block lock was is similar to the Luger. It was very fast. It is, the Luger is very fast, as I mentioned in previous videos. The comparison with any semi-automatic, any and the slide uh, browning design, the slide is heavy, the barrel is heavy, the slide goes back far, comes back far, you have recoil going down, going up. It doesn't happen on the Luger, you have very you know, fast parts. My point was that if you have a trigger issue uh, and you fire, you load it full, you have a full magazine, you fire the gun once, you have some kind of potential problem, the gun will go full auto. It does happen. And when it does happen, you won't be able to control it because it's so fast, it will blur them all rounds out in the, maybe a couple of seconds, maybe one, one or two seconds, in fact. You want to stay away from that situation because it is dangerous. Uh, you know, it, it does happen, and sometimes clients bring us the guns and say, oh, the gun won't fire at all. We start w working on it. The way I test the guns, if you worked or somebody else worked on your gun, you think it has a potential issue. You just got the weapon and you don't know how it's going to function. Before loading the gun, before loading the magazine with all eight rounds, put two rounds in, put one round in, and make sure that the gun will fire properly with two or three rounds. Because if you get a full round, full round burst, at least you're getting two or three rounds. You're not getting eight out of the gun. The other thing you want to check uh, and that sometimes contributes to trigger issues. If 
the slide on the frame will not move left to right. If you have any kind of left to right movement back and forth, a little bit like this gun is okay. This is Erford, the worst uh, tolerances on all of the good Lugers, but you take any other, it won't move at all. If they start moving, if you start you know, doing that and it's moving, that means when you pull the trigger, your lever is pushing on the slide, pushing on the sear, and the whole assembly goes a little to the right. Uh, you don't want that. It's a little bit is okay, but you know, it contributes to your bad trigger pull. It contributes to your potential issues with sear release and sear and re-engagement. And sometimes uh, when the side plates are poorly fitted, the side plate will start moving up and down because it won't engage properly on the lever. It could all be corrected, uh, but unfortunately it cannot be corrected at home. If you call me and say, oh, can, Eugene, can you help me troubleshoot the gun? Yes, but I can't fix it on the phone. So sometimes the gun needs to be shipped to us uh, for uh, a remedy of kind of some kind of issues. The other thing about the uh, Army issue guns, as you know, sides are fixed. This has a fixed notch in the rear. Your front sight is vintage adjustable. A lot of times when the guns shoot left to right, uh, you know, there's a potential vintage adjustment you need to make. We do manufacture front sights. We do have them in different heights. So if your gun shoots high or low, we can adjust the front sight dimension to make the gun point aim directly. You know, uh, it also depends on the weight of the bullet you're using, but that's a different conversation for a different time. Vintage, uh, uh, adjustment, however, sometimes you need to push the side too far out. The old gunsmith's trick is to actually, because these are threaded in the upper, what we can do, if you have an extreme position of the side going left or going right, what could be, how the way it could be remedied is we can turn the barrel ever so slightly um, on its axis, allowing the side to be moved without it's being moved in the dovetail. It can't be done. Uh, it's not an easy easy job to do because it requires special tooling, and we can't emphasize this enough, guys. A lot of professionals, professional gunsmiths that we interact with, a lot of locals, they all know this by now. A lot of times when you think that you can just buy the barrel and twist this barrel off and put the barrel new barrel on, that's only true 50% of the time. A lot of the early guns were put uh, on Loctite when they're threaded and they're very difficult to remove, sometimes next to impossible. We have special tools that go around the upper. We have special tool that goes inside replacing the bridge block to save the upper from being twisted when the forces are applied. We have a special uh, tool that holds the barrel in place. You have to take the front side off. You have to completely disassemble the pistol. A lot of times we have to heat them up to uh, burn the Loctite out of it. It's not an easy job to do. I've seen ton of Lugers broken, barrels twisted, uppers twisted. Uppers are hard to find now. Uh, you know, there's not a lot of people who part out guns anymore. Uh, uppers are very difficult to find on the market. We've manufactured them before. We don't anymore. They are difficult to make. Uh, maybe there will be time in history when we will make nine millimeter uppers again. I have a couple in stock, uh, but we try to avoid breaking them and, uh, you know, expensive replacement or possible replacements. So please, it's only a hundred bucks to replace the barrel. I mean, that's all we charge. You, you, see, you buy my barrel, you buy somebody else's barrel, send me the gun, let me do the work because I'm responsible, not you. You break it, you buy it. That's kind of, that kind of sense. So you end up either with a parts gun or you end up looking for an upper, which in this today's world costs six, seven hundred dollars, a lot more than a hundred bucks for the service. And usually the guns here will go over the weapon, will inspect everything, will check the springs or replace the springs while we add it. We put the barrel on, we polish the feeding ramp, we test the gun, you get it back a functional weapon. We get a lot of calls guys about what could be used in a pistol, what kind of ammunition is best used in a pistol. Uh, if you have a World War I or World War II gun, Germans originally had ammunition that was 147 grain. The design of the ammunition was different what you can see today. So our recommendation, the best operating ammunition in those pistols is 124 grain. Not 115, not 147, 124. You want to use 
Preferably, you want to use European specs ammunition. Fiocchi is good ammo, Southern Ballot is good ammo, uh, Blaze of Brass, they all make 124. Winchester makes 124 NATO spec. Usually, they're issued to agencies, they're not often uh, available for sale. But if you can find them, it's white box with black letters, 124 NATO spec. Uh, the ammunition is fast, the ammunition is hot. You do want to replace the springs. You, they, I can emphasize that enough. You, 40 bucks investment will save your gun, will preserve your gun. It's easy investment, it will avoid all kinds of issues. The other thing that we often see and hear is people complain about magazines, and it's rightfully so. Uh, earlier magazines, magazines of wood bottoms and the old two-piece stamp design, they do not work well, they do not last. This hole that hold, you know, the uh, catch, catch hole in the magazine, see like you can see this wear right here, it starts wearing up, it moves, your magazine seats deeper, and gun stops working. You want to avoid, these magazines are nice collectible, they're getting hard to find, they're expensive, and it's all wonderful, but you don't want to use them for shooting. The best magazines on the market, and pretty much the only brand new magazines on the market that are good, are MacGar, Italian made. You all know MacGar supplies magazines right now to almost every gun manufacturer in the world. They're very good. Problem is, during pandemic, supplies got short and magazines are hard to find. So we do have a couple of them in stock and we try to keep them in stock and we try to find them. Uh, they're, they're, they make two different kinds, they're both good. Uh, the one nickel plated and another one is black. They're very sleek, very good running, very hard materials. They don't look correct, they don't look period correct, but they do function really well. The other option is FXO later one uh, body, one piece protruded uh, World War II style magazines that were made by Mauser during 1938, 1934. We do have some in stock. We always source them, we always keep them there. Not cheap, the original magazines are becoming expensive to begin with, World War I even more so. World War II are still available. There's plenty of magazines on the market. They run about $200, give or take, depending on the condition of the mag. We can find them, we have them. Um, grips do cheap on the guns as well. So you will see a very common issue where on the gun, uh, this near the safety, there's, they call it, you know, the, the standard chip. It's, it takes this corner out. If your safety is not fitted properly or the grips are not original, you start firing the weapon, your, your grips chip right here. A lot of times, uh, if the grip is loose, you, if you want to take your grip and start moving it front to back, you want to try to do that. If the grips move and they're original to the gun, you want to take them off and you want some other grip when you fire the weapon. Because if they move, the grips have internal uh, ledges that help, you know, they have help it position on the frame. If the grip moves back and forth when you fire, those ledges will break off and eventually destroy your grip. The grips, original grips are three, expensive, almost $300. We do manufacture grips. We make them out of any material you desire. Standard grips are made from walnut. We make them from cherry. We make them from Brazilian cherry. We have black walnut. We have American walnut. We have Turkish walnut. We have uh, buffalo horn. We can make them out of modern materials like G10. The price on the grip is pretty standard. It's about $135. We make them for grip safety guns, early guns, late guns, you name it. Manufacturing tolerances were different. Airford, Mauser, DWM. Uh, the grips that we make are slightly oversized. We can send them to you so you can fit them. Uh, we do offer fitting. We fit every grip to existing frames that we use here before shipping the guns, but it, it helps in 80% of the cases. In 20% of the cases, you will have to fit the grip. We offer fitting for free if you send us your frame or you send us your gun. It's very helpful, Very, we make them look authentic. I have an example, uh, if you want, they're on the website, they're on YouTube, um, they're on eBay. You can uh, see them. So this is an example of our grip. You can see that they are not very different in appearance. Uh, some people 
when they see the grips, they ask me, are you sure they're new? Because they look original, like I made them yesterday, so I know they're new. Um, but we do offer multiple type of checkerings. Um, our standard process is we CNC machine these grips. They're slightly oversized. We fit them by hand to a particular frame, shape them, and then check them on top, manually. And we can offer different checkering. Uh, I think this is it guys, uh, give us a call if you have any kind of questions, functional issues, you're looking for parts, you're looking for information on historical significance of your weapon, we offer different services and we are here to help. Until next time, thank you.